All right, look, uh, Alex is hanging in there, so be sure to follow her video diary online. But that's not all. She called in back. She she called in backup to get some help exploring foods and flavors. Hey guys, so as you know, I'm doing Meatless March and it's so exciting and I'm one week down, three more to go, but who's counting? Not me, of course. But when it comes to shopping for vegetables and fruits, it can get a little bit overwhelming. So today we're at the Jacksonville Farmer's Market and we're gonna find our friend and dietitian, Jenna Raddick, and she's gonna help us out. Hey Jenna, thanks for meeting hey, me here. Alex. All right, this is a huge undertaking for me, going mm -hmm. meatless. So let's start with the meat substitutes, because it can be a little bit daunting. Right, so I think people traditionally just think, oh, there's tofu, and like, that's right, it. Right, and that's and, it. And certainly that's a great option. But there's a lot of vegetables that have that good texture, mm -hmm. things like squash, okay. um, that still keep their meatiness to yeah. it, or spaghetti squash, which mm -hmm. is just a really fun texture. Yeah. Then we have things like eggplant, and to me that's a very familiar one, because yeah. most people would eat an eggplant parmesan right, or an exactly. eggplant lasagna, yeah. but that's not all you can do with it. You can put it on a bun and have it as a sandwich. You can sear it up, you can roast yeah. it up. So there's a lot of variety there as well. Mm -hmm. and so we also have mushrooms too, which I yeah. also would never think could be a meat substitute. Yeah, so mushrooms are actually a really nutrient dense food. Okay. I think people just think they're nothing, but yeah. they, they're really good for you. And they have that umami mm -hmm. flavor, okay. which is what meat gives us. So if you're missing sort of that savoriness, yeah. mushrooms can come in and fill the place there. So nice gotcha. thick portobello mushroom caps can also be done, anything you do yeah. like a patty with or on top of a salad, same kind of thing. Yeah, now Jenna and you guys, I'm gonna be honest, there's a lot of things here that I've never seen before right. in my life. And so this is also a good opportunity to kind of experiment with different things at the farmer's market. Absolutely. And the farmer's market is a great place yeah. to find some really cool stuff. You're like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I've never seen this guys. before. This is a daikon is radish. That? <laughs> it's massive. Yeah, so think of this as a time to experiment yeah. with all kinds of new vegetables. Mm -hmm. Don't overwhelm yourself yeah. and, and go buy, you know, 20 new things because then that you, would be me. Then you <laughs> might they might spoil, you know, and then yeah. you feel like you've wasted your money. I would say start with one to two things okay. each shopping trip. Something new. Um, and then thanks to blogs like mine and yeah. others, you can find recipes for almost any True. type of vegetable yeah. out there that's really delicious. So start small, and then by the end of the month, you might have four or five new fruits or vegetables that you're incorporating Add into your eating. Add those to your eating. little repertoire. Yeah. Okay, cool, and so also the farmer's market, we're gonna talk about the fruit, so yes. let's head over there. Absolutely. So speaking of things that I have never seen in real life, I feel mm -hmm. like this is only online. <laughs> Dragon fruit. Aren't they gorgeous? They it's, really are. The creativity in fruit yeah. is amazing. And speaking of being creative though, I mean, you don't have to just eat, an, eat a boring apple or a right. boring orange. You have something like this that you can make smoothies out of. Right, so if you're not sure what to do, like if in doubt, make a smoothie yeah. with it. Really any fruits or vegetables, mm -hmm. I think that's a great place to start because you can get so much in there. Right. Um, some fruits, most fruits don't need to be cooked. There's a few that might you might okay. need to, but for the majority of them, you can cook them raw. You can put them on top of things though, like uh, oatmeal. You can okay. cook them down and make like a sauce with it mm -hmm. to put over a salad or as a dessert or on top of your yogurt. Yeah. So there's definitely some ways to enjoy the variety that yeah. fruit has to offer. So now my question too is when you're at a farmer's market in a situation like this, mm -hmm. how can you tell when fruit or vegetables are ripe and right. ready to go? So there is a wide variety of yeah. signals that mm -hmm. they give us. Um, but often I like to smell the fruit okay. and if it's ripe, it, you can usually smell the aroma of what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Some fruit you want to be kind of soft and some okay. you want to be kind of firm. What I would encourage people to, to do is not just go by the appearance though. Right. Because we can waste a lot of food yeah. simply because it doesn't look pretty. And I'm one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could taste just fine. Yeah. And so that I think is the most important option. Right. And say if there's a bruise on one side of the apple, cut that off and eat the rest. Or if your fruit's about to go, yeah. instead of tossing it, cut it up and freeze it for a smoothie for gotcha. later. That makes sense. All right, guys. Well, those are some great tips for farmer's market shopping. You can head over to our website, firstcoastliving.net, to read again.